Uh, cinematic Assassin. <laughs> what you got? Okay. First and foremost, thank you for being here. This oh. is extremely surreal for me. I'm sure as for the rest of uh, my colleagues here. Um, secondly, apologies for being late, everyone. I have a seven-year-old that needed homework help. I, I refuse to shortchange her ever. Um, Was it that new math? <laughs> Was it that new math? Yeah, new math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do not talk about that new math. Schoolhouse Rock cannot help this generation right now, y'all. Schoolhouse Rock cannot Apple help this. Apple metal equals five, baby. They really can't. They really can't. I got a backhand for whoever created Common Core. But listen, um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably like maybe the big, the big cinephile of, of the group. And the poster behind you immediately trashed whatever I was going to ask. <laughs> like, I That's where I was at. Pulp Fiction. Um, based off of your, your, your last answer as far as how you view your projects, I just sort of want to ask, in the midst of a project such as Pulp Fiction, are you actively aware, like, this? this is something... This is something magical. We're putting together something. This, this could be iconic. This could be amazing. This could stand the test of time. Or are you not? Are you just going to work and, and, and doing your best every day? Like, do you have a sense of I'm making something iconic? Um, no, no, <laughs> because I, you know, something iconic has to do with success mm -hmm. and you can't guess that you can you know what the quality is mm -hmm. and that's what pulp fiction was like i mean mm -hmm. it was to this day you know 25 years later one of the best sets i have been on in my entire hollywood career and i believe that the reason of that was because that script was so damn good that every single yeah. person on that set wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, I mean, one, that's how Quentin Tarantino was able to get so many iconic mm -hmm. stars, you know, at that mm -hmm. time. And this was only his second picture. Mm -hmm. You know, Reservoir Dogs wasn't nominated for nothing. It did right. good, but right. it wasn't a blockbuster. Right. And now mm -hmm. he was able to get all of these names and you know, you know, marquee names mm -hmm. for a budget of eight million dollars. Oh mm. Mm. what? I mean, wow. at least most wow. most of these people got paid more than that just by themselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But my my theory is they read that script and like, woo! Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'll take the pay cut for this. This this is great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. you know, on that in in that process, we knew we were making something fantastic. We were mm -hmm. making something great, but you never know what that's going to lead up to. Although mm -hmm. in this case, it did get to Oscar nominations, and you know, mm -hmm. and it made money. It's funny because mm -hmm. I remember joking around on the set one day. It's like. Well, guys, I mean, they got all these big stars. I guess they could try to sell this like a big summer blockbuster. Well, mm -hmm. at least right up until, you know, the heroin overdose and the anal rape. <laughs> 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 then, Slightly you know, the movie came out. Yeah. Cut, cut two. It made $100 million. I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is why I ain't never going to run a studio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's, I was going to say, as an aspiring screenwriter, you've now given me a, a new benchmark in life. Like, write something so great, everyone wants to show up to work. Everyone's excited to be there. So, mm -hmm. that's no matter like, how, no matter how bad the wigs are. I'll never, I'll tell, I'll no, never no. tell Samuel Jackson that he can't pull off a wig. I'll just, I'll never say. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay. We're gonna take a quick oh, break. We'll be right back with Phil Lamar. Uh, you guys know how we do over there. <laughs> 